So a couple months back, I made a video talking about anti-SJWs and gamers' views on women body types in video games because, of course, last year there was a massive controversy about Abby from The Last of Us, a fairly normal-looking woman who has visibly big muscles but nothing that you haven't seen you know, in real life. And then, of course, there was massive outrage about Tifa's redesign in Final Fantasy VII Remake. There is even some outrage about the new Lara Croft going back to 2013. All of this ridiculous, but I kind of want to flip this today and talk about male body standards. Now, you guys probably have seen the new God of War reveal. And the studio behind it, Santa Monica... They released little, I guess, artist drawings of the main cast. And included was four and didn't look like Chris Hemsworth. Wasn't, you know, very chiseled and thin. Had a bit of a belly. Looked very menacing and very intimidating. He was very large. And of course, it's not conventional for, I guess, the internet's view of this stuff. Caused a bit of a stir. And... The people who were mainly mad about this, of course, just with the depiction of women in video games, it was actually men. Men were the ones who were most outraged about this depiction. Probably surprising nobody. So in this video, I want to talk about that. I also want to talk about just unrealistic standards for men in terms of like our own standards. I'm not talking about like with women, how often their standards are put upon them by the male gaze and how men want them to look but i'm talking about how us as men put these ridiculous standards on ourselves and it actually has affected me personally so i will end this video by talking about my own relationship with um you know fitness and everything like that because although i've always been a fit person and surprising some of you have actually always been a skinny person a lot of people say they think i'm a lot larger I have had a lot of troubles with my own image of myself. Not like body dysmorphia, but I think it's because of the unrealistic standards I just see all around me and us as men put on ourselves. I'm gonna plug my social media and Patreon for about a minute, so skip that if you're not interested. Before we get any further, a lot of my work on this channel is demonetized because when you're covering more serious, sometimes edgier topics, YouTube doesn't like this. So if you've ever enjoyed my work, please consider becoming a patron. And you don't have to pledge a crazy amount. I want to build up my Patreon based on as many people as possible pledging little amounts, like a dollar or two. So if you know you feel like I have ever brought anything that's worthwhile into your life and my content, please really consider becoming a patron to help me continue to do this, regardless of if YouTube monetize or not most of my videos in a given month. Also, if you want to join our communities, come check out our Discord and my subreddit. Those links in the description. And if you want to follow me personally, please check out the Cavernacle at Twitter, at Instagram, and also my personal Reddit where you can keep up to date with all my content and what I'm doing. Every 5k we get a new chocolate orange. We've been chugging along quite quickly over the last month. So hopefully we're going to get two new chocolate oranges by the end of the year. So help me get that milestone. I also live stream on a Tuesday and a Thursday pretty regularly and I archive all that stuff on the Cavernacle Extra. Please remember that because I get a lot of people asking where do the streams go? The Cavernacle Extra, my second channel. And before we go a bit further, you guys might have noticed I pronounce T-H-O-R as like for the number. People think I might have a lisp. Actually, it's a quite common thing with people in London. It's called T-H fronting. And TH fronting is a pronunciation of the English TH as F or V. T fronting is a prominent feature of several dialects of English, notably Cockney, Essex dialect, Estuary English, some West Country and Yorkshire dialects, African American vernacular English and Liberian English, as well as many non-native English speakers. I've only noticed in recent years I do this. I can pronounce it properly, but it takes a bit of effort on my part. Someone I also noticed does it is um, Don Robbie from Arsenal Fan TV. Just because I don't see many YouTubers pronounce stuff like that, I do think it's a London thing. So here is the picture if you guys haven't seen it. They didn't actually show for from the front view in the trailer but there he is and you know quite a big guy he's not like really really fat or anything he's just you know larger than chris hemsworth and he's probably a bit skinnier or at least less visibly bloated as the fat version in avengers endgame 
So already on the Instagram, the comments came in. I definitely don't like the designer four and the others. I love it. I don't like four's design at all. Someone on Twitter, chaotic blade saying, wait, so this is actually confirmed to be the official model of four in God of War Ragnarok. LMFAO, I thought this was a meme. It's like the artist didn't know who four was. So he Googled it and the first result was fat four from Avengers Endgame. Honestly, it's lore accurate for design and it really works for me. I haven't actually disliked any of the designs so far, uh, each to their own. To me, he looks too much like a drunk fat guy. One would see at a pub and not a god. And I hate the strongman comparison because most strongman competitors are in far better shape uh, than God of Wars 4. Someone else saying, can I ask why you think a literal god needs to be strong fat? Please take into consideration why a human would need to be strong fat. I'd also like to point out that nowhere in Germanic myth does it state Thor was considered fat or chubby. The two places it states he had a huge appetite was the lay of Thrym or the tale of Utgarda, Loki, neither of them state that. Why does Thor in the new God of War game look like a Discord admin? Um, why is he fat? It's funny, but I have to ask why. Thor kind of fat though. You've got some serious perspective issues if you think a huge appetite on a warrior means he's a tub of lard. Do you have any idea how important stamina and cardiovascular health is to actually sustain combat? How many calories does it take to stay big while doing cardio? I refer it and four looks like an actual god. Now, my favorite, favorite subreddit, Kotaku in Action, had a very, very long post about why four being larger um, was ridiculous. So I just want to read some of it, it's quite funny. So why trying to justify it with realism is stupid? Some idiots have tried to push the realism angle, claiming, well, four would be fat because of his eating and drinking. Next is, well, four is strong. Well, yes, that doesn't mean fat, it just means built. Yes, people can be fat and strong, but also you can be well built. I doubt anyone would say Sam in Game of Thrones is the same as the mountain. And that shows the kind of difference and issue at play here with the argument. The look for four that's been shown so far looks more like Sam. Four is also meant to be part giant. So yeah, big dude who will likely require a fair bit of energy to sustain his fighting. Oh yeah, and almost forgot four is a god who can fly using a magic hammer and command lightning so yeah not exactly confined to even the physics of our reality let alone the biology of it oh and no four drinking part of the ocean wouldn't be evidence of him being fat either just evidence he doesn't obey the biological laws of our reality either because otherwise he'd have to take several pee breaks with the amount of fluid going into him why i find attempts to justify four themselves stupid this is what baffles me there really isn't some need to do so the creators want to do it so they did there's a justification, but hey, SJWs killed the author metaphorically, so I guess that won't do, and they have to keep finding some stupid other justifications other people wanted. Hell, you could go with the justification of, well, this is a different interpretation of mythology. I mean, perfectly fine. People make different versions of things all the time, but that relies on, again, artist visions, which SJW types hate. Hell, even a, well, I like his look. Okay, sure, you don't need some additional justification, but it's almost offensively stupid to try and present stupid arguments based on realism or historical myth mythological record to try and justify things when if SJW types pushing this were being honest some of it would just be contrarianism and some of it would be uwu daddy four one of the oldest known depictions of four is an ancient bronze statue so yeah most of this is SJWs passing around the same claims with nothing really to back it up other than well well, in the stories, it says he eats heartily and drinks a lot. Fat Four is woke trash in God of War and being fat is unhealthy. Um, Four looks like a drunken dwarf. They mess up the design and it needs to change. So a lot of people very mad about that. Pretty much all men. And I would love to see how a lot of these guys actually look before saying like how outrageous it is. Four looks the way he does in the new God of War. I also love the justification these guys said. If Santa Monica came out and said... We just like the design. There's no justification here. They haven't even really said anything about it. Then they would accept that. Because they didn't accept that with Abby and the Last of Us 2. A game that actually goes out of its way to explain and contextualize why she is bigger than the other, I guess, female soldiers in the game. And it also kind of shows contextually with her revenge narrative why she might actually want to be big to take on a certain person who is very, very capable and has pretty much ruined her life. Now, thankfully, there was a massive response on Twitter of women, especially, I saw, saying they love the design and this guy is good looking and sexy and everything like that. Lots of men saying it's very cool to have sort of this bigger representation. Not every video game character or any character in any media needs to all look the same with chiseled eight packs and massive biceps and being in very, I guess, physically fit 
condition. But people are also making the point that, yes, the strongest people in the world often look like this, probably like a bit more muscly. But if you see props in rugby union, they have big bellies as well. If you see like Eddie Hall, who has been the strongest man in the world at different times, he has this big belly as well, because when you're putting on so much mass to be really strong, that's often where it goes and you just can't do anything about that. And four in that picture isn't really like a really fat guy or anything. He just has a bit of a belly. So I saw a lot of people who do have body types like that saying they really appreciate it as well, because now they have like this cool character in a video game who, you know, kind of looks like them. And, you know, that that is something that's cool. Just like maybe Abby from The Last of Us, who does look like women, and they found this sort of character that kind of represents their body type. Now, The Gamer did a decent article about this stuff, just talking about the mythology of it, and a lot of those anti-SAW gamers mentioned it, but I'm just going to read it in case you guys aren't actually familiar of why you can justify, if you even need to justify, making for a bit of a larger character than someone like Kratos, for example. So by Kian Ma, uh, if you're mad about God of War Ragnarok's 4, you know nothing about mythology. So if you look back on the Poetic Edda and Prose Edda, which are two primary sources for the Norse mythology we know and love, you'll notice that 4 was a bit of a actually. I've always thought the first game grappled with this extremely well. We get explicit details about Thor wiping out the Jotun, and it's pretty obvious that his favourite hobby involves drinking too much. He is not the heroic paladin of the Avengers. He is a Norse deity, which means he's a bastard. What's more, Norse mythology's Thor is pretty heavy. While he drinks half the ocean, as in literally half of it, there's one particular well-known story called the Bemiskiva, a poem from the legendary Snorri Sturluson's iconic poetic Edda. Here Thor loses his hammer to a giant and he will only return the hammer in exchange for Freya's hand in marriage. Given that Freya herself is completely averse to the idea of marrying this giant, mostly because she's annoyed at Loki, Thor dresses up as her and attends a ceremony in her place. On top of eating an entire cow to himself, he drains several casks of ale, causing Thurum to be immensely confused that this is supposed to be Freya. This is actually a scene in Assassin's Creed Valhalla's um, portion that is set in Asgard. So the first game also addresses his size. Uh, Mimir's many descriptions of Thor include Fat Dobber, Sweaty Ball Bag, and the biggest butchering bar in all the Nine Realms. Obviously, Mimir is not a fan. Still, the idea of getting annoyed about how Thor looks now just comes across as a bit moronic. The first game literally describes how he's going to look multiple times. If you're expecting a cover model for Men's Health magazine, you weren't paying attention. So like I said in one of the anti SJW said, you could just make Thor large because you want to. You don't have to justify it. But there's more than enough evidence in the real mythology of the Norse gods that he could actually look this way. And of course, you can take it to the other way and say, you know, it doesn't really matter in the realm of reality. But is this really enough to get mad about? Like, Scandinavian mythology is not something lacking in depictions these days. We obviously have the Marvel movies. You also have things like Vikings and The Last Kingdom, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where Thor is like a bit bigger, but not massive or anything. So this is like a culture that has been seeing a massive, like, surge on the world stage. If you are into a lot of different mediums, you probably have been exposed to this mythology at least. But I just think it shows how like toxic our own views towards, I guess, what makes like a manly man is for men. And like I said, I want to talk about this with myself. Now, something going back to it now, and I used to think it was kind of cool, is like the transformation of previously like funny nerdy actors like Chris Pratt's into like these really chiseled superheroes. So I just wanna show you a picture of Chris Pratt and the sun ran this, it's like before and after. And then it shows, you know, obviously that famous scene in The Guardians where you can see his six pack. Now in this picture specifically, he doesn't look that large at all. But then the question for me is, why does he have to have a six pack as Star-Lord? Because Star-Lord isn't like some all action superhero fighting with his fists or like hand-to-hand -hand combat he's going around with his guns and these like little boosters on his shoes you totally don't need to look this way but i guess in pop culture this is how superheroes look like even with um toby Maguire's spider-man he looks normal in one scene after he gets bitten he looks super jacked and stuff at least that makes a bit more sense contextually but i do like how i've kind of scaled that back 
a tiny bit with Andrew Garfield and then Tom Holland, who is you know very lean and stuff. He's not totally massive like someone like Chris Pratt is. So just reading a Sun article from the Times, don't buy the Sun, I'm just gonna read you a tiny bit because they love the gossipy stuff. But with Chris Pratt, it said, the American took drastic measures by losing six stone after he was initially turned down for a role in Moneyball, which he eventually got. Speaking about how he eventually lost enough weight to land the role, he said, finally I got in a good enough shape that I took a picture of myself and sent it to my agent. Pratt had ballooned to 21 stone on filming for Delivery Man, but now has a body most men would envy. You can't have beer, hash browns, burgers, or anything fried, no carbs, and you have to work out five times a week. If you cut the crap out of your diet and spend an hour a day doing something physical, you'll feel better mentally, physically, and spiritually. It's all tied together. Saying, honestly, there's no trick or secret to it. It's about getting after it and being patient and consistent. And it's not about starving yourself because you want to give your body proper nutrition. And think about who you want to be in six months or eight months or two years time, whatever that is. Pratt opened up further to men's health to admit he lost 35 pounds in six weeks by running five or six miles a day, eating leafy green salads and protein shakes and cutting out all alcohol. Now, Chris Pratt also said he wasn't getting roles because he was larger as well, but I showed you in that picture of him wearing those small, I guess, swimming trunks. He wasn't fat at all, really. He wasn't skinny, but he wasn't overweight. Like you could totally play Star-Lord with that. You're not gonna have like a massive like gut hanging out, but that's also another problem. It's like, why does it matter for this one character? And like I said, it's the whole standards we now put on ourselves as men. And people, you know, like anti Jabbies will say, well, look at the Roman and Greek statues, loads of like chiseled men. But that was also just like the standard kind of physique back then. Like you were either very skinny and probably your muscles and abs were showing because there wasn't loads of food to gorge on if you were just like an average person. Or you may have been in the military, so you're probably training a lot and maybe you look fitter and stuff but now like we don't need to do this as much humans don't need to be as athletic and there are so many different like normal healthy body types but we're still obsessed with you know just the conventional i guess like beauty of the roman age with like these chiseled eight packs and massive muscles but the thing is if you want to do this and that's totally fine but from the interviews of chris pratt it feels like he just had to do this to advance his career which is uh you know kind of awful. Now, another person I want to talk about is Kumail Nanjiani, who probably went through one of the most drastic transitions in this while he was training to be in Marvel's The Eternals. And can I just say, I don't understand why he had to go from looking how he did to this. And can I also say, I don't actually think he looks better. Like maybe in from an aesthetics point of view, more women and like men may desire him with this big chisel six pack. But even from his initial reveal of his new abs and muscles, he seems to have taken it to another level. Like look at this photo, look at his chin. It's like a completely different face from his old one. And like I said, why did he have to do this? And the only good thing about him is that he actually, unlike Chris Pratt, who made it seem like anyone can do it, just, you know, work out, cut out all the rubbish and don't have any fun. Kumail at least said, I would not have been able to do this if I didn't have a full year with the best trainers and nutritionists paid for by the biggest studio in the world. I'm glad I look like this, but I also understand why I never did before. It would have been impossible without these resources and time. And I think that gets to the heart of the problem. Obviously for me, I don't feel like he should have had to do this. If they like him for the role, why does he have to look like completely ripped and chiseled? I mean, I can understand being in like decent enough shape, maybe for the costume fittings and stuff, but looking how he did to then looking how he does now, like even just from when he initially got ripped to now, I think just looks a bit overkill. And like he said, he's a guy who never really took it as seriously before because he didn't have the resources. Now that is just one aspect of pop culture, but that is just like so dominant, isn't it? Superheroes. And nearly all the men look like this now. Like, maybe some don't as much. Like, you have people like Loki, where the emphasis isn't really on their body. Of course, Tom Hiddleston is in good shape. Or even, like, I like Daredevil for Charlie Cox, because he is in good shape, but it doesn't look ridiculous like Chris Hemsworth or, you know, Chris Pratt. Well, you know, these aren't normal guys with normal bodies. They're clearly training with a lot of money behind it. Whereas, like I said, with Charlie Cox, it looks like this is probably just a guy who probably would get this body from doing Daredevil stuff. But also one of the biggest shows in the UK is Love Island. And you're not getting on Love Island unless you have this perfect body. 
Now, I think this is where a lot of my problems with my own body image come from, is that the perfect body is not just muscly, it's also very like lean as well. You've got to have visible abs. It's not just about big shoulders and big arms these days. You've got to have it all. So that means not only will you have to do a lot of weight training, you're going to have to put stuff about focusing on your abs and cardio and everything like that. And hopefully I put on screen some pictures of like the Love Island cast. But all these guys are like tatted up, great bodies. Like I said, the body I'm describing, very visible abs, very visible massive arm muscles and shoulders. And because of like the dating scene being changed significantly because of social media with things like Tinder, then the emphasis on looks have gotten a lot worse for the dating scene. Of course, it's always been there. It's just like human nature. But now when it's boiled down to a little bio of a picture... It is like the goal for men these days to be desirable is to have these great bodies if you want to be a success with, I guess, women primarily. And that's what you should aspire to be like. So I think it's just so damaging to men as a whole that we feel like we need to look like people who are millionaires and get their trainers, food, nutritionists, everything paid for them so they can star in these big movies. But I guess when that is all you see, most depictions of heroic characters look like this. They never look like how Thor looks in Ragnarok. And that's also maybe a little problem that he is going to be a villain. And it's also weird, no matter how many video games you play, you can customise your characters, you mainly can't customise your body. And everyone just fits like a certain mould. Now, I want to talk about myself here as well. Now, people might be surprised because they often are surprised, maybe because it's just the beard and my face. People think I am like a larger person, like maybe I am look like four or something, which you know, I wouldn't care if I look like that or anything. But no, like, I've, I've always been athletic. I've always played football a lot. Um, probably the heaviest I ever weighed was 90 kg, but I am nearly six foot two. Um, the lowest I've weighed is probably about like 84 and I probably like weigh about 85 at the moment, I'd say. Um, so my weight has fluctuated throughout my life. So I want to give a little story about my own life here, right? So, um, the fittest I've ever been in my life was two years ago. I was playing, um, semi-pro football. We had two trainings a week, which were super intense. I wanted to die after them. Like I had to have ice baths and stuff. So intense, the most training I've ever done in my life. And then I would also have um, a game on a Saturday uh, afternoon. So, so much exercise for me. So, um, here is what I looked like after that, right? Um, and as you can see, for me, I I'm proud of this. But as you can see, like, I'm not chiseled at all. My abs are visible, but they're not, like, defined. There's no six-pack here. There's no, like, even four-pack there. It's just, like, weird abs you can see because I've been doing so much cardio, right? And I look back at that now, and I say to myself, if I could look like that for the rest of my life, you know, it's not amazing, it's not perfect, but for me, I was happy with that. I would do it. But at the time, here's where this whole mindset really messes me up. At the time, I used to think I didn't look good, because I used to think I needed bigger muscles. And I used to think that the football training was really eating away my like biceps and different muscles in my arms. So although I looked good to myself without a shirt on, I didn't actually look good, you know, maybe when I was wearing my clothes, I didn't think so. And I didn't think I looked like as manly or as strong and stuff. And that is just, for me, it's a problem with seeing so many, you know, men in the media and stuff with this body that I feel like is really unattainable for a lot of people unless you either have the luxury or maybe even the money to get this body because I was obviously putting the work in for this but at the same time at the back of my mind I always thought like oh I've got to get back to the gym do some weights and stuff but physically I couldn't I was too exhausted I was dedicating all my energy to football in a way I'd never done before I'll show you a photo from a bit later so here's me maybe during one of the lockdowns and I have bigger arm muscles right um and then you'd think I'd probably be a bit happier. But of course, when I had a body that had like more mass, I was thinking, well, my stomach's fat now. Like I don't have much definition there at all. Like the abs that I used to have when I was training all the time, they're pretty much gone. So in both phases of my life, I felt bad about my body. And that is just ridiculous. And I know it's ridiculous. But I'm using that to illustrate how toxic men's view of our own masculinity and physiques are. Because like a lot of you probably see those pictures and you're like, 
what would you have to complain about? Maybe you're like, if I look like that, no matter which one, I'd never complain. Like, you're just being a baby. And like I said, I recognise it's stupid. Like, I'm six foot, like, nearly two. I am in good shape. I exercise all the time. And, like, here's a photo of me now, which I feel like I don't look as good as either of them, but I'm happy, like, content enough. But in the back of my mind, I always have this thing. Like, I could look better. I could look better. Why don't I have a four pack? Why don't I have a six pack? Why don't I have that with bigger muscles? And I've always tried to be this individualistic person and stuff and not care what people think. And broadly, I don't care what people think. But it's just the general culture that really, I think, has got to me over the years um, working out, especially as I've taken it more seriously as I've got into my 20s and stuff, like properly focusing on different things and having these goals and I do think it's because the representation and normalization of looking normal like that Kumail stuff he just looks normal he's not overweight at all he's not like unhealthy or anything he's just normal why can't he be the superhero why does it have to be like Greek gods or Olympic gods haven't we done that enough by now why can't superheroes just look like average people. Why does even like, you know, old Spider-Man, who's meant to be just an average guy, have to be totally like ripped and stuff? And I feel like this feeds into a lot of male inadequacy. And they, I think in my opinion, wrongly blame women for this stuff. They act like women don't love men unless you look like Love Island. So it's women's fault for doing that stuff. But women don't control like society, right? They don't control these advertising companies who use models who look like people from Love Island. They don't control shows like Love Island. They don't largely direct Marvel movies. They don't largely dictate the casting of Marvel movies. There's a lot of women working in these industries, of course, and they do make these films. But by and large, it's a male thing. And males push this stuff and it's very telling all the four discourse is pretty much done by men saying this guy is fat and doesn't look like a god and stuff like that. And I saw a lot of women saying this guy looks good and they find him attractive and stuff. And I think that's the main problem. And because men, you know, control this stuff, you just hope that the normalization of just normal men, just like completely your average man who is not unhealthy, who just has like a normal, like slim-ish body, but then even like take that to another degree, larger people as well. I know a lot of larger people who aren't unhealthy, who actually do a lot more exercise than other people. Of course, genetics come into play as well. So I feel like this four discourse to me just reaffirms something I felt like for a long time is that it's a self-sabotaging thing by men where we will ridicule people for being larger and we're all guilty of it. I've done it throughout my life and stuff. It's just a toxic thing that we're all like indoctrinated with. And for me personally, how it's affected my life is I just never feel happy with my body. Like it's not a body dysmorphia thing. I'm not depressed or anything. But I've never felt happy with my body. Like, back when I was training for football, if I took my shirt off in public, I'd feel pretty good about that. But I would feel a bit inadequate when I'm wearing clothes. If you asked me to take my shirt off in public right now, even though I look totally fine, I'd probably be really hesitant and I wouldn't want to do that because I feel like I don't look as good as I should or something. Again, very toxic mindset and I feel like the culture is very responsible. Whether I have some sort of undiagnosed anything you know, you can be the judge, but I don't think I do because I'm happy enough of how I look, but it's just a little thing in the back of my mind where I will never be happy. And I feel like it's this cultural osmosis where because every male I see in terms of like actors and in terms of like models or TV stars and reality stars is this unattainable goal. And before we finish the video, I'd like to say it's obviously nothing compared to women because not only do women have these standards, it's often imposed on them by the opposite sex, by men. And women get way more hate for stuff like that. And women get so much abuse of stuff like that. So I'm not comparing it to women's struggles with this stuff. And the only thing I would say is someone who's super into my football, obviously played it at a decent enough level, still play it. I played it tonight. Is that the only good thing of football is in football, you do see a lot of different body types. No one is that large, though. I will say that, even though I've played with some great players who are large, a lot of them kind of look like how I did. Like, it's not like washboard abs and massive muscles. It's just like, you've gotten really skinny and you have really lean muscle because you're training so much. So that's one good thing about football as this, like, elite sport where not everyone does actually have to look like some sort of person out of Love Island, although, you know, a fair few do. So I'd be really interested in the comments if you have any similar stories to me, just about your body in general, how you think the culture 
really influences you. You could be larger, you could be like a lot more muscly and ripped than I ever was. So I'd be really interested to know. Hopefully I am not alone in thinking this. So let me know down in the comments. Let me know what you think of Four's design as well. If you wanna follow me on social media, at The Cavernacle on Twitter and on Instagram, if you wanna join our communities, subreddit and Discord. And if you made it this far, also consider maybe checking out my Patreon. And thank you for watching this video.